Variant Manager provides a common definition environment, which is highly integrated across schematic and PCB layout. Variants of a board assembly are defined and managed within a single project. Changes to the master design will be applied to update all variants automatically. Variant Manager enables easy documentation of the variant definitions, including the master design and all variants. So let's take a quick look at variant definition and management, all driven from the schematic design. The Variant Manager is launched by selecting the View Variants option from the View menu. The Variant Manager grid is now displayed in the schematic, showing the two variants, Variant 1 and Variant 2, currently assigned to this design. With Crossprobing enabled, I can select parts in the Variant Manager grid, either by block or individual part. After selecting the I.O. Port 1 block in the Variant Manager grid, the schematic window centers around the block, and I can now push down into the block. Selecting Variant 1 and setting the Variant Manager Receive command to the Auto Unplace option, when I now select all components on the schematic sheet, they are automatically updated in the Variant Manager grid with the words Do Not Fit, which of course signifies that they are unplaced in this variant of the design. Individual parts can also be defined for each variant. Selecting C5 in Variant 2 within the Variant Manager grid, again selects and centers the schematic view on C5. I can now manually assign the Do Not Fit option through the right mouse menu. Besides not placing various parts in different variants, some parts may be substituted for different values and part numbers. Here I will use the Replace command to replace 337 with a different capacitor from the company parts database. With the variant definitions now complete, I can view the summary of just the variant differences in the Variant Manager grid. With Variant 2 selected, I will now process the variant view using the Create Variant command. Notice how C5 is displayed, not as placed, but shown a large red X and C37 is also updated with new component properties such as part number and value. After returning to the master view to exit the Variant 2 configuration, I'll again use the Create Variant command to generate the configuration for Variant 1. You will notice all components in the schematic sheet for the I.O. Port 1 block are now displayed with markup indicating do not fit in this variant. There are many different report types, but for now I'll go ahead and generate the master and variant bill of material reports. There are also several options when generating the bill of material reports, such as the format type. In this case I'll just use HTML and also whether or not you want to include all or selected variants, and also the master design. When the parts list reports have been generated, notice that there are separate HTML reports for the master design and each variant configuration, along with an index. To complete the documentation of the variants, I will now export a PDF report. Selecting the appropriate PDF sheet in the bookmarks table, the I.O. Port 1 block, you can see in the PDF sheet that the parts are marked up as unplaced. Selection of the component in the PDF enables you to intelligently interrogate the component properties, which is ideal for design review. You have now seen how the Variant Manager is driven through the schematic environment, enabling you to reuse your design for different component assemblies, increasing your productivity and lowering the cost of your board design and management.